All right, I've got a uh, update to the legacy deck. It's actually a lot of updates. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to post a link to the deck on MTG Tapped Out, and there sh you should be able to find it in the uh, description. So if you want to get the deck list there, um, here's where I'm at now. A lot of different things going on here. Um, I don't know if there's enough to go over uh, all in one video, but basically there's the as for told combo is in here uh, it works very well with winter orb which is in here as well and gives us a way to deal with uh decks where we cannot contain their cards then we try to constrain their mana so against decks like mono blue or mono green enchantress decks like that or well just enchantress in general winter orb can help a lot as for told is a great combo with it and then Along with that, as for total, also has Restore Balance and Ancestral Vision in here. Ancestral Vision is very good against control. Restore Balance can be. Um, but as for told, is certainly a backbreaker if you can get the trifecta of as for told, Restore Balance, and Zern Orb. And in some of these really long games against, um, particularly Enchantress, you can. And so you can create a Armageddon effect that frequently mind twists them since they usually are the ones with more cards if you haven't been able to stop their card drawing engines, which is really tough to do. The other nice thing about that is that Restore Balance, as foretold, gives us a board sweep and um, for creatures that has utility in other cases as well without just being, you know, Supreme Verdict is a board sweep that we can force a will with, but that's about it. Whereas, as foretold, Restore Balance combo can do a whole lot, especially in a deck running for Mox Diamonds and for Forces of Will, where you can dump your hand and get a lot of stuff into play that Restore to Balance doesn't care about and really punish someone hard. Uh, Search for Iskanta, Sylvan Library, Scroll Rack, Land Tax, all these cards, none of these cards, rather, um, will Restore Balance punish you for. Uh, another card that's made its way into the deck is Council's Judgment, and Council's Judgment is a way to deal with Argothian Enchantress and other things that we can't target, like uh, uh, True Name Nemesis. It's also a way to handle Planeswalkers, and because it exiles them, and we can potentially recur it with Gaia's Blessing, you can really exile everything that your opponent can uh, get into play in a long enough game. So it's mostly there just as a sort of, um, it's the just in case things slip through because they do sometimes. This is kind of the all pur purpose um, solution. It also is a good way to deal with um, a Chalice of the Void. Opponents try to get Chalice on one, Chalice on two, so that they can deal with um, the one drops and then shut down maybe Disenchant. And the Council's Judgment, Chalice on three is much harder thing to get to, and a Council's Judgment can clear out the, for example, the Chalice on 2, which would freeze the Disenchant so you can clear out the Chalice on 1. Um, what else is going on in here? Uh, there is the Dak Faden Ice combo, which is where you, you ultimate Dak Faden, and then you start looping Ice and effectively gaining control of all of your opponent's permanents. Uh, there is Counterbalance Scroll Rack is in the deck, although Counterbalance is also good with Sylvan Library, Brainstorms, and Jays. Um, what you'll find is that every card in here that has synergy with every other card also has multiple synergies. It's not just in there for a like, two-card combo. For example, Scroll Rack Land Tax is pretty gross, uh, very, very powerful, but um, Scroll Rack, obviously comboing with Counterbalance and other effects like just, well, fetch lands, for example, can act as a reusable brainstorm every turn, while land tax can be very effective with a Sylvan Library. It can work well with the Dak Faden. It can work well with Chase, and it can work quite nicely with the brainstorms. Um, Scroll Rack also combos, incidentally, with uh, Search for Iskanta very nicely, where you can put cards you don't want back and then throw them into your graveyard, or uh, if Search is flipped, you can just impulse pass them. Um, Zern Orb combos with, of course, the Restore Balance um, ultimate kill shot, but it also combos with Sylvan Library, because every two lands you sack will draw a card. Or if you have Sylvan and a Crucible, you can start, you can sack land and then replay it, sack it, and draw an extra card. 
And so every other turn, you can draw an extra card that way. Uh, Zern Orb, of course, will enable you to continue the Elantax scroll rack business, which is really nice. So there's that, and it's a built-in defense against burn, which can be a problem for a control deck uh, that doesn't have uh, short game plans. Eventually, they can just run you out of counter spells. Although, with counterbalance, it's tough for them already. Guy's Blessing combos with Search for Escanta. You can uh, flip the Guy's Blessing from the search, and it will trigger it, which will cause a reshuffle and give you your whole graveyard back into your library. You end up with no, no cards in grave and a full, fully stacked library. Uh, at a certain point in the game, this can be pretty pretty effective, um, and it's part of the way that you can recur your deck without having to spend mana doing it. Um, Guy's Blessing is also really good with anything that stacks the top of your deck and just you, where you need a shuffle, but it's also got utility in the format, so it can be a little bit decent against Dredge. Like for example, maybe they or Reanimator, perhaps like they go first turn um, Faithless Looting and they set up their graveyard and you go Landmox, Guy's Blessing, and you get rid of the things that they just worked to put in their graveyard, and that can be really nice as well. And since you only need one blessing um, to actually flip the Ascanta to get your whole graveyard back. Um, or you can loop blessings if you want to really like tighten your deck down and just and just get down to almost no cards in your library where you're just looping blessings over and over. Um, what else have we got here? Dak Faden uh, combos with, of course, Fire or Ice. You can take control of two creatures with toughness greater than one. Kill one and take the other one, for example, with his ultimate. Ice is just take anything. Dak Faden also combos with Crucible of Worlds. You can discard lands and then put them directly back into play, uh, which is which is pretty powerful. Um, I think those are the main ones. It also combos, like I said earlier, with land tax, where you can pick up extra fodder for Dak and convert them into real cards when you don't have something better to do with them, like a scroll rack. And the nice thing here is if you do that, unlike in like the Commander deck, for example, when you run out of basic lands for the tax rack, you can get them back with Guy's Blessing. So that's not too big of a deal. Actually, it's not worth worrying about. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much mostly everything. Obviously, certain other um, synergies and combos kind of jump out as you play. Now, as far as the sideboard... Uh, goes. Um, I mean, you know, Moat and Throne of the High City, for example. Moat and Humility is a combo. Humility and Fire is a combo. It's so on and so forth. So, um, after game one, you get to bring in a whole lot of very cheap answers to whatever it is your opponent's trying to do. And you also have the plan against control of sneaking in a Monastery Mentor, which means that you can get rid of the Humility and the Moat if you want to weaken yourself to you can potentially weaken yourself to creatures that way, um, but you always, in, in general, you're going to always keep in the council's judgment. So you take out humility moat, you take out swords of plowshares. Um, so there's three pulls right there, uh, and usually uh, I'll even like take out say Zern orb, and I'll bring in four red red blasts. Um, so there's four replacement cards for those. And then a lot of times I'll go ahead and cut the restore balance as well and sneak in a Monastery Mentor. And so against Control now you have a deck with, you've got a Disenchant and a Council's Judgment as removal. You've got a Council's Judgment and a Fire Ice rather as removal against creatures plus a Jace. But you've also just got the ability to make more creatures of your own. And the rest of your deck is a Control deck which is geared to beating control decks. So that's very a very strong position to be in. All in all, I would say uh, the deck's been performing very well, and I look forward to showing you some games. So, um, so look at games from the last seven days. Now, I was playing some Legacy Cube, and then you can take a look here. I had one little problem here. So I actually won the first game very easily, but I was... Uh, screwing around, dirtling like crazy. Just I just wanted to work. It was an opponent who didn't concede, so I was like, wow, this is great. I can just work through all the different engines in the deck and kind of see how I feel about the different things that it's doing. And as a result, I, uh, I timed out. He, my opponent beat me in game two, and then in game three I had uh, control of the game, but 
I timed out because I wasted so much time in round one. So don't do that, but this would have been a win, I, I think. At any rate, regardless however we want to chalk it up, that's one, two, three, four, five, six wins and a loss, six and one, seven and one, eight and one, nine and one, and we can either look at it as eight and two, or we can look at it as uh, as nine, uh, sorry, 10 and 1, uh, whatever, I, whatever it was, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 11 games here. We can look at it as uh, 9 and 2, or we can look at it as 10 and 1. Um, I'm going to not count the first one, though, because my opponent just saw what I was playing and conceded. So out, it gives us 10 games to look at for this deck, and we have somewhere around a 20% loss rate or a 10% loss rate, depending on how you look at it. So it's going very well. So I'm going to spin through some games now. The first games are going to be are going to be um, with earlier versions of the deck, and then as you see, you'll see the deck get tuned and tuned and tuned in the direction that it's at uh, until we end up here. The only thing is that the, um, the deck uh, begins with black. And instead of Council's Judgment, I had Vindicate uh, because I wanted to kill lands. I had there were, there were a lot of things that were different. So rather than discussing the differences, we'll just kind of observe them as we go and see how things are at. So again, opponent scoops in that very first one, so we just won't count that. Now let's take a look at these matches. All right. So yeah, as you can see, I had black in here. I was trying out different things. And that's, I mean, I think that's an important thing to do here. And I let off with Tundra knowing that my opponent might wasteland me because I have Brainstorm and a lot of lands in my hand and I'm going first. And so if my opponent wastelands me here, I feel like it helps my tempo more than it hurts theirs or more than it hurts. You know, um, it's kind of like wasting them with a Tundra. So, all right. So here I'm going to get down a plow on the Mattery Shaper, and then my opponent has this tech play that I don't agree with at all, but he completely locks out here. He exiles a Simeon Spirit Guide to dismember his Mattery Shaper and hits a Mattery Shaper. I probably should have forced, but no, I'm not going to force a play like that. That just seems crazy, right? I will take this one out, however. Like, that's such good luck. My opponent could have easily hit a Walking Ballista on zero, for example. So, oops. And then I make some really bad play here. So all I needed to do is waste his wasteland, replay my land and pass, and then next turn slam moat. Instead, I let my opponent do this. It's going to be multiple turns before I can get the moat down. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I really wasn't thinking. And um, I'm going to get within ballista range. So my opponent wisely pumps here. I take five, and that's it. I mean, I can play Moat now because I wasted time with the double Wasteland. I can play Moat now, triple Wasteland, when you consider I didn't waste my opponent's waste. Uh, so I play it now. My opponent pumps up his Ballista, shoots me, and I die. So completely stupid playing there uh, leads to a game loss. No surprise. This deck is definitely a skill tester, and... Um, I, I really like that. A lot of the ways you can lose are your own fault, which i that's the kind of deck that I want to play. Um, you make a bad choice, and you pay the price. Anyway, so my opponent's got a chalice, and I decide I'd rather tithe for a second island rather than and a second white at that rather than um, brainstorm in response to it and try to find a force of will. And my opponent... Foolishly plays an endless one, not quite realizing, I think, what's going on there. Goes for a ratchet bomb here. I've got a Teferi's response in my hand, which was a test card. And so I'm thinking I'm going to just blow them out. As soon as they wasteland me, I'm going to Teferi's response that, which is a stifle that draws me two cards and destroys the land that was activated. If it were a card like Rishadan Port, it's just completely backbreaking. But either way, it's incredibly powerful. All right, well, I didn't draw a land here, but it's a good opportunity to play Jace. See, I had the Abyss. I had Gorilla Shamans in here. This is where I realized Gorilla Shaman is not a solution to a Chalice on one and ended up taking him out of the deck. All right, so what's going on, though, is my opponent's already down to three cards. Is having a tough time with his mana situation. I had to use the City of Traders to play an Eldrazi Temple. 
Gets a thought not seer down, looks at my hand and decides to give up. So my opponent had taken the best card they could have taken most likely here is the Abyss. And then they would have needed to use Wasteland prior to me um, untapping because of the response. So assuming that they wasted the island Volcanic and took my Abyss, the problem for my opponent is then that I've got three mana and a Jace to their w one or two if they're playing Eldrazi. And I've got an Impulse. So I'm going to just bounce the Thought Not Seer for a card, Impulse into whatever it is that I need to be doing, and carry on with my game. While my opponent is super constrained on mana, probably has no lands in hand. And with that thought, maybe they decide, okay, well, I won't Wasteland. Well, they won't Wasteland, taking the Abyss, I assume. Means I've got a Teferi's response, so they never really have a good opportunity to do so. And then I get to Wasteland their Eldrazi Temple and set them back kind of two mana, bounce their guy, get a card, and um, and it's just all around bad for them. So with that in mind, my opponent just scoops and figures they'll take game three, I suppose. And so we move into the third game. My opponent leads off with Thorn of Amethyst, and I decide because I can play two mana on turn one that I'm going to let it go. I throw away the Throne of the High City. I'm not sure how correct that was to do, but, you know, that was the choice. All right, so I could have forced there, but I let it go. Opponent's got a, uh, oh, he's got a Cavern of Souls. I could not have forced there. I take that back. All right, so opponent's got a Chalice of the Void here. So I want to get rid of the Endless One. Of course, I've sideboarded up the four Swords to Plowshares. I'm going to force a will the uh, Chalice and keep the Brainstorm in my hand because I'm looking to make sure I hit my mana drops. All right, so a Wasteland here is good because I can either Brainstorm or, or STP. When it goes for a chalice, so it'll be a brainstorm in response. And I'm going to put a swords underneath an abyss. Put in place matter reshaper. All right, so I'm going to play Dak Faden here and plus and get through cards that I can't use. Uh, Sword Force not looking too great right now. Factor Fiction was a test card, obviously, that I was going to recover with. Opponent, for some reason, does not kill Dak and allows me to dump two moxes right there, which is huge. Goes for, um, I'm not um, wasting here because I have, you know, Teferi's response, but then my opponent plays Chalice on two, kills Dak Faden. So all I can do here is play a Crucible and get extra mana into play, which would be good if I don't die. All right, so opponent's going to bash in for five. But uh, really, my opponent hasn't done a tremendous amount of damage at this point in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and free waste them and play it back, and get the Abyss down. It converts a Matter Reshaper into a Simeon Spirit Guide. Opponent plays a chal Thorn out on two and realizes his Chalice on two, shutting him off there. And I natural into a moat, and we can call that a good game. Uh, my opponent at this point has no options. You can see all kinds of different test cards in here that aren't in the current version of the deck, but all have been interesting um, for one reason or another, and uh, worth trying. And could make their way back in. All right, so ZTR here I'm facing. I've got a, a nice little start. If my opponent doesn't do anything too crazy right off the bat, then I'm in great shape because I've got a uh, counterspell backed up by counterspell. Ooh, even better. As Kata backed up by Force of Will. I'll take it, especially against White. All right, so my opponent plays Stoneforge here, and I screw up. I needed to force that right there. I should have forced that there and then wasted my opponent, and I could have countered his follow-up. Like, th that was an easy force right there. Completely bad decision. Um, and I'm going to pay for it big time. Like, I, I don't know what... I don't know, when, when did I play this game? I must have been... I must have been tired, or I don't, I don't know what I was thinking or doing at the time, but that that was just, like, the worst choice. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't think of a more obvious force of will. Anyway. Um, but, well, I mean, other than something that was clearly lethal. But in reality, this Stoneforger is going to prove lethal. So my opponent had fetched the Jitte at first, and I was hoping that didn't, that many didn't have the better skull, but alas, no luck there. Is now hitting me with a a pretty serious um, 
threat. I do get a Jace down here, which is nice. And I leave Wasteland untapped so that I can't be dazed. And then go ahead and bounce and then waste afterwards. And for some reason, he doesn't doesn't equip the Jitte. And so, and could have just killed the Jacer, and it turns out it was to play a Jace. So I'm going to, I guess that's an obvious force as well, but yeah, not, not so great. So I'm going to look at a new card with this Kanta. It was a winter orb, and it's possible here as well that I could have taken the orb. I think I do, yeah. And so what I end up doing is plussing the Jace and playing a land and passing with the winter orb out. And if, and what I'm doing is I'm gambling because I don't have a lot of options left and I kind of need this gamble to stick and it does. If my opponent doesn't draw a land, well, sorry, I have Jace, so I know they're not going to draw a land. If they don't um, play a land from hand, then the best they can do, they have no, if they only have one mana this turn, is attack Chase, right? Maybe make a play that I counter. And then after that, Jace will have two counters left. And on my turn, I get to bounce his uh, Stoneforge. And then from there, we're good. So I really, that was like a, a lucky finish for me. But it turned out, it was kind of a nail biter. But I, I put myself in that position to begin with. And that could have gone a lot smoother if I'd have just been a little bit more on the ball there. All right, so here's a game against, or a match against Enping here. I have a pretty... Solid hands, not too amazing, but not, you know, horrible. It's got a lot of cards, like if my opponent had been playing this card and went Thoughtseize, they probably take Search or Scroll Rack, but they can't get both. And then, of course, there's the Winter Orb and the Duretti and the Abyss. Like, there's a lot of good things happening in my hand, so it was fairly insulated from that sort of thing. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance and just slam Escanta immediately. And I feel pretty good when it sticks. Because I need to... And, and it's possible, though, that what I should have done there was got the scroll rack into play rather than the Escanta. Because then I could look at a brand new hand of seven cards this turn and find myself some mana. So I have to actually let land tax go. I find a brainstorm. I'm not willing to brainstorm and risk missing. Plus, I can brainstorm something that I don't want on top of my deck for search to mill off. So I'm going to chill on the counter. And then when my opponent tries to brainstorm to predict, I decide to counter it, thinking, well, what's the worst I could do? Well, the answer is counterbalance. But they're down to only two cards in hand, so maybe I can make this work. I'm going to let a counter spell go here. Find a blessing, not an improvement, although I can brainstorm the blessing back on top. And my opponent fetches, doesn't do anything else, and hits. And at that point, yeah, between mana screw and a counterbalance active, I, I give up. So we move on to game two. All right, so we'll sideboard in. Things get much worse for my opponent. I've got a disrupt that I was playing around with. It's an old school card I used to use. It seems really good in the format, to be honest, with all the ponders and brainstorms, the preordains, the predicts, the portents, along with um, him to Tarok, Thoughtseize, and so forth. I think Disrupt actually has a lot of value, but um, there is the issue of where do you put it? You know, there's only so much space for things. So I was... I was trying it out, and it certainly was good there. It's a free counter spell, um, so it was like my opponent just mulliganed, and my deck is one card thinner. It also found me that island, which was pretty useful. All right, as Kanta, I'm going to counter this, and then if my opponent forces, I let that go, and then um, red blast it right afterwards. Doesn't happen, so instead, I'll play Blessing. And go ahead and get myself back a Disrupt and a Counterspell. I find a uh, land off the Blessing, which isn't too exciting at this point. Hopefully we'll find a Brainstorm to fix that. But at least I have Reb up. And my opponent's not doing too much of anything, which is always nice to see when you're not doing too much of anything, right? 
this is great. So now I get to play a fetch land into scroll rack. It resolves. I thought I was going to have to fight over it with red blast. And that means that I'm going to be able to activate scroll rack and I can still red blast if I absolutely have to in response via plateau. All right. So let's go. Okay, let's get rid of these extra lands. I don't need a Force of Will with no blue cards. I'll put it on top, though, so that if I want it, I can take it. I decide I don't. So during my upkeep, I'm going to fetch. That way, if my opponent has Stifle, I can fight with uh, Red Blast. I can fetch during my upkeep. There's no reason to do it at the end of my opponent's turn unless I have another play that I'm going to make, like a fetch into a scroll rack activation. might make sense, but otherwise, no. So now I've got Counterbalance down with scroll rack up. And that combination means my opponent has probably lost this game, considering I have both a 1 and a 2 drop. Um, and the two 1-drops that I have are Red Blast. My opponent isn't quite ready to throw in the towel, but when I play Throne of the High City and threaten to start drawing 2 cards per turn while protected under a scroll racked counterbalance, I think at this point it is where the opponent gives up. Now, they could still get out of this with um, Council's Judgment. If I don't have a 3-drop, and currently I don't, but it looks like my opponent's not willing to do any of that and just goes ahead and packs it in. Now, if they had tried like a Snapcaster here, then of course I just scroll rack for 1 and put the guy's blessing on top and let Counterbalance deal with it. <laughs> if they were to try a um, Vendillion click here, then um, I would just go ahead and attempt to Red Elemental Blast it down. My opponent would have to push it through. Um, hopefully, Counterbalance would stop whatever it was that they used to back it up. It's possible that the play would actually be to let the V-Click happen and just sit on the Red Blast and then wait till I can untap and Red Blast plus activate Scroll Rack. In fact, that's probably what I would do. I mean, the idea is... I, if my opponent tries to sneak a creature out during their end step right here when I'm slightly vulnerable, I want to make sure that I deal with it so that um, they don't get the Monarch back. Anyway, I believe that was game two. So we move into game three. And I've got a very, very good hand, um, provided I can get to that second land before I get Wastelanded. And there's a Wasteland there for me, but I'm going to go ahead and play this because I do have Brainstorm in my hand. And my opponent got disrupted the other game, and they might be like uh, overly compensating for it. They might be nervous. Well, apparently not. I'm going to go ahead and brainstorm. Okay. So I want to brainstorm as well because I'm going to be able to combine the brainstorm with the Sylvan Library. The problem is I also want to force a will and make sure the Sylvan sticks. And if I'm going to force with a Sylvan, I'll force with a brainstorm because then I can use Sylvan to refill my hand and have more force fodder. So I kept the brainstorm in my hand. All right, so opponent's going for back to basics. I am going to force the way that I suggested, but my opponent force a wills back, and here we are on basics. Now, how good is Sylvan? Let's compare Sylvan to back to basics. Well, in this case, it's very good. So Teferi's response is another card that I was um, testing. So I, I hit a basic land and Teferi's response, which gives me a blue card for Force of Will, so I go ahead and pass. Opponent's going to try to get on the board before I can get two blue up, and I force, leaving my opponent with only two cards in hand to my four. Strangely enough, I'm winning the card battle, even though it looks pretty bad for me. However, delivery... One of the reasons that Winter Orb is in this deck is for the Back to Basics deck specifically. And now I can play Mox, Mox, Orb, slam the door on my opponents, and suddenly um, we are back to the basics, the very basic game of Magic in which uh, Winter Orb is actually a card that people play. Well, I remember those days anyhow, fondly. So now my concern, of course, is a Snapcaster getting down and ending my game before I get a chance to get on board. So I go ahead and play this weird Duretti that I'm playing in here. So now if my opponent wants to snap caster, he can just snap, get no extra cards, and run into a construct. So it's turning out to be pretty nice here. And so um, the other card, of course, that I'm 
concerned about is uh, is uh, like I said, Vendili and Click. Those are two threats. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> guys blessing in some counter magic and find myself a red elemental blast. It shuffled the two lands on top of my deck that I didn't want, and uh, and found me a blast. So my opponent is using a Snapcaster here, but the problem is, you know, while he can use Snapcaster to get extra cards, we'll go ahead and red blast that away. Um, he can't use it to apply any pressure because of the Doretti. So it's really just a terrible, terrible brainstorm. A blue, blue one mana brainstorm. Uh, which is pretty horrifying under a Winter Orb, right? It's pretty useless. Alright, so I'm going to continue with the Doretti plan. Ice my opponent's planes to grab that tithe that's on my deck. Then go ahead and tithe and play the land and pass. Um, most likely, I would tithe for a uh, for a uh, plateau. Play the plateau and pass, and then I assume my opponent would do nothing. At which point, I get to untap and. Um, the basic island and the two moxen, and I'm sitting on a red blast, brainstorm, and four mana in play against my opponent's one if they or two, depending on if they hit a land drop. So, really good stuff there. So, managed to pull a win out. Remember how fast my opponent shut me down with the uh, back to basics, and of course it did it did nothing, which was really satisfying there. All right, so I've got these games against Don Piper. And still with the modified version of the deck, still got some clunky, some clunkers in here. My opponent is playing mono green, I believe, mono green um, enchantress. So not a good place to be. I'm going to go ahead and rush out the rack because there's very little I can do. So we're going to scroll rack big. I'm keeping the winter orb because it's one of the few ways that I might have an opportunity to kind of be in this game at all and i'm gonna go ahead and slam it even though so um abundant growth doesn't actually produce extra mana like a wild growth so i and i'm going to tithe off cards that i don't want from the top of my deck right there by the way so my opponent's not ahead until they play utopia sprawl now that forest produces two mana and wild growth will make it produce three and this is why winter orb is good against um enchantress but not great by any means. However, counterbound scroll at rack certainly can be. So now my opponent's going to go for another enchantress. Um, I can do nothing about it. I try to reveal a card at random, and all I reveal is Dak Faden. Bye. I love you, son. Bye. 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 Bye, big boy. All right. Sorry about that. That's my my boy. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, we're. I apologize, but uh, you know, <laughs> I've got a, a son I love very much, and uh, he's. We're over here visiting his grandparents, so he wanted to come in and say goodbye. They're going to go to the park, or something. Uh, I think. I think going shopping is what they're going to do. Actually. Anyway, so my opponent's kind of going off here. Basically, with Rofellos's gift, was able to uh, re rebuy a whole lot of enchantments and is able to run out a lot of threats against me. And um, I am, while I am getting some free counters on my opponent, um, right now I've got a one drop on top. The card I'm really fearing is that early harvest right there. So I go ahead and score rack in response and put a three drop on top and counter that. Then brainstorm in response to Rafelos's gift and put a one one drop on top of and stop that. So my opponent's down to 19 cards in library. So if you want to see the cards I've I've been countering with, that's them. Opponent's play here is an unbridled growth, which you know I, I'm letting that go. Elephant grass, don't care. I could scroll rack on one, but oh, wild growth, I do care about. So I'm going to put a one drop and a three drop so that my next draw is a three drop. So I stop that. And then I'm going to draw this three drop. That way I don't have to, um, I can shuffle it away if I need to with Flooded Strand because I haven't found a two drop yet. 
But my opponent's down to only 10 cards now, and a 3-drop will prevent him from um, crows and gripping me or from uh, doing this, early harvest. Bang. Countered. I ice my uh, winter orb at the end of my opponent's turn, and boom, I get all of my mana back. And now I've found myself a way to continuously replay fetch lands, and I've got a 1, 2, and 3 drop in my hand. So opponent's down to 9 cards. Oh, wow, and a brainstorm to go with it. Very nice. Go ahead and build up my mana a little bit further. I've got 18 minutes on my clock to my opponent's 11 because I'm just playing quickly. All right, Utopia Sprawl, I care slightly about. Since I have a Brainstorm, I can go ahead and afford to care about that. So we'll counter that, which will also prevent him from playing, uh, prevent his opponent from playing any um, Rafelis' Gift. All right, opponent goes for a three. And that's the trap, obviously. We're going to counter that with Counterbalance. And now I've got a Force of Will up plus uh, Disrupt if there is a target for it. And with that, my opponent scoops it up. So we move on to game two. So it looks like I should have lost, considering my opponent has six cards to my 38. So they're up 32 cards. But fortunately, the winner orb com combined with the counterbalance scroll rack was enough to constrain my opponent's options. You know, just barely enough that I was able to um, eke out a... Uh, an almost impossible win. I have a very, very bad hand. I'm not sure what I was thinking with keeping this other than that, hey, it's got Winter Orb. All right, so I need to disenchant the Enchantress's presence before things get out of hand, and then my opponent's got Rafaela's gift and replays it. I don't draw anything spiffy, so we'll play Winter Orb and pass. Opponent's going to go ahead and grab some extra at least one extra card and some more mana. I'm going to go ahead and Gaia's Blessing the Disenchant into a Disenchant, which allows me to destroy the enchantment, and then my opponent Rofellus' Gifts right back onto the board. And I still haven't found a blue spell. Oh, there's one. All right, so I can Blessing here, and I decide that my opponent might go for an early harvest, so I'm going to sit on Disrupt. Here's where I wanted to see Harvest. Instead, I see Enchantress's Presence. Not good. Going to force that. Try for another Disenchant. Fail to find one. Get a Mox. That's fine. And guys, touch. Button growth. All right, still got some time. Can I please find something? Anything? Nothing. Opponent's going to draw more cards. Oh my gosh, that land is way, way, way too good. And an Enchantress and Early Harvest, and then goes off. So what's going to happen here is my opponent's going to draw their whole deck and kill me with a giant Eldrazi. Right? It's just cards, mana, cards, mana, cards, mana, but look at the clock. Oh no, kill me with the giant tendrils. There you go. Tick tock, right? Okay. All right, you got me. So we moved around three. This is a solid but not spectacular hand by any means. Still, not a lot going on over there it makes me happy. A disenchant and a counter spell is where you want to be against this deck. Speaking of a disenchant target. Okay. Good, and I've got a way to force a will here if I need to. Presence, sure. I'll go ahead and pop that. Play a fetch. Sure. Cycling off some some fake card drawing that doesn't draw cards without the uh, engine. All right, I'm going to fetch and tithe in response. So now I can get up to five mana, and I decide that because I have um, Force of Will up, I'm going to actually Dak Faden. And try to win this game as fast as I can. So I'm Dak, Dak away uh, various cards, getting the Sylvan down. Now I can refill my hand with more uh, cards. Because my opponent's down to low, very low um, situation here on car, on resources, I actually end up um, force of willing and early harvest and then 
countering a seal of primordium which allows me to lock my opponent pretty hard under winter orb an ultimate deck and then if you noticed what just happened right there so i ultimate deck and then my opponent of course is stacked correctly stacked everything on a basic forest which is you know can't be wastelanded but with dax ultimate i ice the forest which is about to become tapped and dax ultimate says gain control of it so this is now gain control of target permanent draw a card and at that with my opponent sitting under a winter orb they they give up and so that was my three games against Don Piper. Um, of course, they were down to like no time at all, but uh, but uh, I feel like I was in a pretty solid winning position regardless. All right, so there's a cunning wish in this right now. Uh, not, not, not in the current version, but in this version that we're playing with now. So lead off with turn one as Kanto, which is always one of the stronger starts for this deck. When it gets a chalice to the void. So I let it go. I decide that it's more beneficial to kind of wish a disenchant out here. I throw away humility. I'm assuming my opponent's playing some kind of stack stack, not realizing it's going to be Eldrazi, which is a huge mistake on the cunning wish for humility. Fortunately, I don't have to worry too much about it because I'm not running cunning wish anymore, but when it runs out of Reality Smasher there, I take out Chalice of the Void. I'm um, in bad, bad shape. Dire Straits. Um, I filter some cards with Dak Faden, knowing he's likely to die. Counter an Endbringer. Dak eats it, takes one for the team, basically. All right, so I've got a counter up now. Opponent's down to four cards in hands, playing just extra mana. And a batter skull. If I had encountered the batter skull, you'll see that I might have been in this game. So good and dig for a counter there. Get rid of the reality smasher. The other thing I could have done right there is just throwing away the wasteland and sat on the counter. I took the wasteland though because I wanted to be able to activate Escanta. Alright, so I'm gonna do exactly that. I'll take ice just as a hedge my bets against dying to the germ. If you're going to tap down a germ like that, make sure that you tap the germ and not the batter skull, or else they'll have a untapped creature with a batter skull attached to it, um, and they will batter your skull. Well, I am not in good shape whatsoever here, and opponent goes for a ballista. I have to counter that. Follows up with Warping Whale into a creature. Go and ice the germ that I should have countered oh so long ago, and I'm dead. Even if I dig for uh, something with his Kanta, there's nothing I can do to deal with two creatures like that. Not a 4-4 four, and a 1-1. One, one. Not with only a couple of mana left over. So I completely punted game one almost every way possible, throwing away humility and making just a bunch of other mistakes. So we move into game two. And I've increased the number of disenchants in the deck, actually. Go ahead and waste a cloud post early. It's nice. Brainstorm here. Brainstorm again and get a flooded strand down. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle away cards I don't want. Play a Crucible Waste and a Mox. And my opponent is almost completely waste locked. Uh, I'm able to get a Jace down here, and while my opponent's not locked out of the game, they've only got three mana, make that one. And I, they have a Chalice of the Void out, but obviously here what's going to happen is I've got a counter up and a disenchant up, so I can do, you know, get rid of the Chalice and then counter whatever they're trying, whatever else they might try to do, or I can, um, there's so many different, ways this can go. I can disenchant the chalice is almost certainly going to happen and then brainstorm and and then after that um, I can uh, wasteland them again. Gaia's blessing to shuffle away the cards that I put back that I didn't want uh, for two mana and then activate Jace and I think sit on a counter spell which I'm, I'm going to see like six or seven cards next turn which means that any chance my opponent could have of coming back from this is absolutely gone, and my opponent wisely concedes there. So we move on to game three.
and I've got a great hand if I can live long enough to enact my plan, right? And hopefully not get um, the moat exiled by something. Oh, well, Karn, I'm going to have to force right away. So this great plan is looking a little bit weak already. I do take out a Grim Monolith here, and I take it out because, um, not because I knew I was going to draw a Vindicate, although it was a nice stop deck. Opponent has Warping Whale to counter it. I take it out because I'm concerned with what it could lead to. Particularly, I'm concerned with, say, Ulamog or Emrakul. So now I have a mode out, though, and I'm going to have to try to... Basically, I just have to hope that my opponent can't clear my board. So Ulamog would do it. Emrakul would do it. All his dust would do it. There's a lot of threats that I have to be concerned with here. But I've got to play like... Um, I've got to try to get defenses up, and I can't just assume my opponent's going to have it every time. I do get a Wasteland, which helps a little. But it's still sitting on nine man over there, so that's enough for an all his dust at the very least. All right, I'll keep a brainstorm. So now I decide I'm going to actually not search with us, Kanta. I'm going to play Humility, and the reason I played Humility is because um, I'm going to uh, because that reduces the number of options that my opponent has by some degree. Like they're not going to be able to ding my hand, for example. So I'm going to take out the waste, uh, the monolith as soon as they um, try to untap it. Dig with Ascanta, finding another Ascanta, and sitting on a counterspell. Opponent's got 12 mana at this point. Plays a Trinisphere. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to play Search and Pass. Opponent now has 14 mana showing, which means Emrakul next turn if I don't find something. But I find a Crucible and a Jace. So I keep the Jace, play the Crucible, waste them, and get my opponent back down to 12 and decide I'm going to go Jace and plus it into an Always Dust. So it, so lucky, and that was super stupid, like dangerous for me to have done that play. I could have just sat on his Contactivation. I could have done a lot of things. Fortunately, it paid off because I plussed up the Jace. My opponent got there, all his dust tucked, and didn't have a follow-up that was going to break my back. And then from there, I'm able to start wasting my opponent into oblivion with counter backup. And Jace running on my opponent, and as Kanta running for me. So I've got him at this point, but that was an incredibly dangerous play on my part. And fortunately, it did work out. But I think it was foolish. So here I've got three games against Victor Dama. Victor D-M-A. And my opponent is playing uh, more Enchantress. Okay, this deck seems to be fairly like common in um, the format. I see quite a bit of it. I have to force the will the Zenith there because that's a Zenith for Enchantress. I'm going to slam Counterbalance and hope for a little bit of luck. Alas, opponent plays Enchantress's Presence. I've got something like five three drops that could hit it. I do not hit it. I see instead a Restore Balance, which is not going to help me. Play Winter Orb. Wait to see if my opponent untaps Sarah's Sanctum, because if they do, I'm going to waste that Sanctum. All right, so I'm not even going to try to counter an Elephant Grass. We'll just let that go. Countering does not prevent him from drawing cards, so there's no point to that. I'll hold on to the island because I may need it for a mox. Sprawl, I will hopefully counter. Instead, I reveal Crucible Worlds. Where were you when he played Enchantress's Presence? Or she, I assume Victor is a he. All right. Crucible Worlds comes down. Opponent goes for a nothing. So I've got a little bit of time here. Boy, I'd really like to find something good. All right, so during my opponent's upkeep, I'm going to go ahead and take out the Chantress Presence. Opponent has no plays. This is actually like me recovering a little bit. I draw a Wasteland, so I'll go ahead and waste and then replay the Waste because I have no other. I'm not going to play any other lands. Get an Island. Uh, next turn, if, I, if nothing goes on, I'll go ahead and untap land and play a land in order to get in order to get a um, 
force of will on board. I find a search for his Kanta here. It's actually make an odd play here, but I try to waste their um, fetch because I'm going to actually play search and hold on to the wasteland in my hand. Opponent's got a myth realized out, which is a problem. I get a Jace down, which could be good. Start Jacing. Hoping to set up the top of my library so I could counter something. Opponent's got a 3-drop, and I have to let it go. I didn't find a 3-drop. So Banishing Light takes out Jace. We're back to parity again. I, put a, I had put a Sylvan Library on top, thinking, hey, this will be great. They'll go for Enchantress, and I'll counter it. At least that would have been the hope. Instead, I've got to play a Sylvan here. Opponent's got a Gaius Touch, and I reveal blindly a Tithe. Opponent's got one card in hand, and the one card in hand is Emrakul. <laughs> Yuck. Okay, well, that'll work, I guess. So we move on to game two. So at this point, the deck's still not fully able to deal with Enchantress. Um, I'm not even sure that it fully is able to deal with Enchantress here yet, but it was in worse shape at the time. I'm going to play the early City of Solitude. I've got an early Crucible going. I'm going to disenchant the City of Solitude and pass. I'm going to get some Miri's Guile out, which is a window for me to play Throne of the High City. So we're going to play that and crack it immediately because I can force a will off the search. And I want to draw extra cards. Opponent's Guiling over there. Finds a Sarah's Sanctum, which is always dangerous. Plays Enchantress. I'm going to force the Enchantress. So I've lost one as Kanta. Go ahead and waste that and... Play a Mox and pass, drawing into Ancestral Vision. Not super great here. Opponent runs out a Zenith on four into Eidolon of Blossom. So whenever they successfully resolve uh, a card, an enchantment, they get to draw a card. Now, um, so... That Eidolon of Blossoms, though, worse, is it can beat me and take the Monarch back. So I replay Throne of the High City, suspend an Ancestral, pitch a Mox, and pass. My opponent gets some card drawing, takes the Monarch, and then during their second main, I take the Monarch right back. So they don't get to draw a card from it, and I'm still the Monarch. Ancestral's floating. Oh, I found a Disenchant, which is pretty nice, and I'm going to kill that Eidolon, and now I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I get to draw an extra card, and I've got Force of Will up again. Back to parity with an Active Throne. Enchantress is attempted. I'm going to go ahead and force that, and victory. The opponent gives up. This is a really nice game, I thought, because um managed to beat my opponent stealing the Monarch without them actually ever drawing a card. So this is one way that you can, thanks to Crucible, you can actually retain the Monarch indefinitely like that, play a little hot potato. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then, unfortunately, I think game three... Um, yeah, I just... I don't really have a great deal going here. I do have early counter spell, which is always important against, um, say, a turn to uh, Enchantress. So we get to deal with that, which is nice. So I'll play a land here and pass. Uh, presence. I'm going to go ahead and brainstorm in response and see how I should respond. It's not looking good for me, though, um, because... Um, yeah, I decided to waste here and suspend a balance. This was a big mistake. I should have just held on to it for my... I should have just held on to it and also probably held the Force of Will up. Opponent's got Ground Seal against, I suppose, the guy's blessing. It's not really going to affect anything here, but more importantly, they're drawing multiple cards per turn. So now I'm short a Wasteland here, so I have to pitch the ice instead of casting it. And my opponent gets a second Enchantress. 
And we're just, I'm trying to count the, the timer down on the balance. It's the only thing that can save me. Three turns. I wasn't sure if I should hold it for as foretold or play it right there. I decided to play it just to see if that would be fast enough. And what I'm going to save you a little bit of time on is that the answer is no, it is not fast enough. In fact, I just, I end up with a whole lot of nothing here. Um, I play a moat because I'm getting my face kicked in by a lot of creatures, and that might allow me to become the monarch and get some card drawing later. If I can find myself a humility and complete the lock, I probably win, because even an Emerald Cool will give him an extra turn and then become a 1-1 one, one and do nothing. Place an Enchantress's Presence. But that's not necessarily a win, because of course my opponent could just Oblivion Ring. Utopia Sprawl has now got 13 cards in hand. It's getting pretty absurd. 14, 15, 16, 17 cards in hand and even more mana. Yeah, it's getting totally outrageous. Uh, Pony has very few cards left in library. Notice the Restore Balance still has two ticks on it. And... Uh, what's going to happen is Emerald Cool is going to come down and kill me. So opponent's going to draw their whole deck, Emerald Cool me to death, and I lose. So not not so good there. Next game, though, I'm playing against River Dragon 8, who is playing Mono Blue, I believe. And this at this time, I think I had two As For Tolds in the deck, and part of me feels like that might be, that might be where it needs to be, but... Um, leaving it alone for now. All right, so opponents you know, trying to kind of craft their hand over there and look at my draw. Force of Will with a counterspell, and as foretold, Plow, Restore Balance, Tundra. Things are going to get really good here really soon. So opponent brain, uh, Merchant Scrolls for a counterspell. Leave them with just one mana up. So I'm going to go as foretold, and they allow it. They don't, they don't fight me over it, which was huge. Ponders into something, a uh, high tide turnabout. I'm going to attempt to force, and it sticks. They've got only four cards left in hand, and look at this draw. Scroll rack for one on the plow, finds a mox diamond, so I get to tithe into a land, my worst land, mox it away, wasteland my own land, and restore balance. And if you haven't figured out what happens right there yet, what a wonderful turn that was. I have no cards in hand and only two lands, even though I have three mana, well, infinite if you count as foretold. So my opponent is reduced to two islands and no cards in hand and no creatures, thanks to Restore Balance. Of course, they had no creatures, but that was the easy part. So I Mind Twist and almost Armageddon my opponent in a single turn for zero mana and crush them, and we move into game two. It was super satisfying. And in game two, again, my opponent starts crafting their hand. Uh, meanwhile, though, I can do a pretty good, a pretty good amount of that myself. Not as much as uh, the preordain, ponder, brainstorm players, but certainly a decent bit. So I'll just kind of chill out here, let my opponent do what they're doing. Not gonna fight too hard. Brainstorm, see if they want to fight over that. They don't. So I'm going to shuffle away basic land, tithe, grab two lands for that mox, and then play a red source, play an extra blue source. After combat, we're going to throw down a land tax because I'm used to playing with mana drains, just a habit. And pass. I've got tax backed up by double counter spell, so I'm going to start gassing my hand back up. There's an as for told. Very, very strong in this match. Opponent cunning wishes for a um, pact of negation. Goes for a high tide. I'm going to allow it. High tide. I'm going to allow it. I'm looking at their hand size. Time spiral. Not going to allow it. Pact. I let the pact hit. Then counterspell the time spiral. They force. I then counterspell the time spiral. And at this point, my opponent gives up. So what happens here is the time spiral gets countered. They can't. Um, if they. Fluster Stormed, I actually think I can pay for it thanks to the High Tides because I can tap this Tundra for three more mana, so that's five, six mana. So, no, I guess not because there was eight 
counters in the stack. So if they fluster storm, I'm out. But they definitely can't spell pierce, at and they they clearly can't force a will. So they 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 have no counter as it turns out. But because so they pa remember they played time spiral and I played red blast and they packed it and I let the pact happen. So the red blast was countered by pact, and because I didn't counter the pact, the pact effect is on the is going to happen next turn. Then I went ahead and countered the time spiral anyway, which means that on the next turn, my opponent didn't get what they wanted regardless, and on the next turn has to pay five mana or lose, is sitting on four lands in play, probably would have played high tide if they had one, and so loses the game. So it was a really nice way to win uh, against high tide. All right, so here I have a game against Dino Jr. where I just dirtle. I'm, now I've got the deck exactly the way that I've showed you, and I'm playing with all the different things that it can do and not really paying attention much to time. I'm kind of just sort of enjoying the deck doing its thing, right? So we've got a really good early uh, start with the turn one counterbalance. Another reason to play them, I think, is just for those kinds of starts. And we'll go for an early Jace. Unfortunately... Opponent has a oh AK that's not bad so I reveal a um, Sylvan to the AK and it gets countered but that then my opponent knows he can safely push for a force so well and does and then counsels judgments away the uh, counterbalance so rough but my opponent's recovered I did get a free card I countered na accumulated knowledge and I got one for his force of will and I'm playing Sylvan here and I'm about to get some more yum yum. So I will not actually take pay for life for that island. I'm going to miss a land drop here, and I'm okay with that because I can land tax that into my hand in a minute. So we'll let that go. Put it has no play. And I'm saving Brainstorm to combine with this land tax and turn them into real cards. I'll go ahead and pay some life there. Tithe into two more cards, one of which I can play, the other one which I can mox. And I still have the three islands in my hand for brainstorm purposes. All right. I'm going to save that brainstorm for the same reason. Go ahead and tax up a little bit. Find a search. Let's go ahead and brainstorm away the islands again and play an island this turn along with the humility because I don't want to be snapcastered. Opponent's down to only three cards in hand after their draw phase. All right, so let's shuffle away some more islands. Definitely going to pay life there and drop to three now that I've got search. Try for an as for told here. My opponent has a force of will. I'm just going to let it go and play search for his conta. I've got force of will and a counter spell, plus I've got swords to plushers for a uh, snapcaster. I decide to let it go in case I need the rest of what's in my hand. I want the island for um, tax purposes. That may have been a mistake. A little bit greedy, but like I said, I was getting a little a little bit dirtly here. Go ahead and flip, flip as Kanta. I take a winter orb that I don't need at all. I'm not sure why I took that. What I really need, what I really should have done, not need, but would have been smart to do is just slam a, a moat there just to make sure that I don't take three points of damage from some instant speed 1-1s. One but instead, we're just going to dink around because I'm being goofy. Play the moat now. I've got at least one Force of Will ready to go. Opponent did have a Snapcaster, so good on that. Choice. Okay, we'll go ahead and get rid of two more islands and a Winter Orb that I don't need when I'm this far ahead and I'm running uh, active as Kanta. All right, during my upkeep, we'll Escanta pass them into a Mox, and then let Sylvan do its thing. All right. Play the other Escanta, so I can, con and then convert, restore balance, uh, Council of Judgment, Guy's Blessing to the top of my library. The thought process being that I will now reshuffle my library, or my graveyard of good stuff, into my deck, and look at brand new cards. Goodbye. Thank you, Escanta. Swish, they all go away. Find myself a Zern Orb. 
death is no longer imminent, uh, imminent and I can now convert useless lands into uh, more cards with Sylvan Library if I want to. Of course, at this point, I don't need to. And as you can see, I'm, I'm completely like dirtling around here, just taking my sweet time, enjoying the lovely goodness of all the different things that the deck can do, far more than what I need to do or really should be doing at this point in the game. Uh, the, the replay might bug out because of how ridiculous I got with, like, when you do too much of this card drawing, the uh, replays do tend to bug out after a while. They just can't handle keeping track of all the different effects and things that are actually going on. Let's see if it's going to advance ahead. Will it? Nah, we're going to bug out. Um, but basically what I did was I ran my own clock out. So we play game two, and look how much time's left. Six minutes. <laughs> so I don't know what I was doing there, but I was having fun doing it. And sometimes that's what you need to do. Zern Orb here is too early. I do have As for Told to potentially combo with it, but I should have held it because it might be something I want to brainstorm away. Opponent's got an AK there. I've got, on the other hand, a tithe, so I'm up a card at least. All right, opponent's doing nothing. I decide, this is maybe a little too aggressive, but I decide to shuffle the AK back in, hoping before they can get another one, and then they go for an accumulated knowledge. And because I'm afraid of Jace, so I let them draw two cards here, and then they fluster storm, and I don't know if that's one of the cards that they drew, and if it is, I feel kind of bad, but all right. What are you going to do? If they tapped out for Jace or something, then I wouldn't have been too disappointed with my line, but pretty much things are bad here. I'm, I'm low on time. I go for as for told. It makes no sense whatsoever. The correct act action was land pass, but with four minutes on the clock, I'm trying to play super aggressively. So here I would have been able to counterspell and back it up with a uh, red blast. Instead, I'm going to get crushed by a mentor. So if, if I'd taken the correct line, I would have countered the mentor, red blasted the counter that they tried to protect it with if they had one, played Throne of the High City, and uh, crack that sucker and start drawing two cards per turn and probably been fine but eh, short on time from dirtling i decide we'll play game three anyway just because i just want to see i'm basically just kind of putting the deck to the paces i want to see what it can do opponent asked me about that and i was like well i'm just gonna just i just enjoy it it's a it's a pleasurable deck to play um so it, it just feels good to play this deck all right, early Ascanta is wonderful. We'll dump an island. And I decide to float the Ancestral even though uh, I don't have a Force of Will right now. Because I figure that I've got time, and Ascanta will find me another blue card. And this will allow me to put some pressure on my opponent a little bit later from now. So dump that, play this. And pass. I'm not going to. I'm going to go get basic lands. Opponent's got his first AK off. All right, Force of Will, uh, I want that, so we're good now. When it goes for a V-click, I'm going to go ahead and let them have their choice. Uh, Force of Will or Force of Will, they take Force of Will. That is a good choice. Uh, because I can Pyroblast that later, and uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So after sideboarding, I keep Moat and Humility in, but I, I, I take out all the, the like the STP, Swords to Plowshares. And, um, well, I'll show you the sideboarding after this. Opponent goes for an entreat here. I'm going to, I think about it, and decide, actually, you know what? I've got that dealt with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a Force of Will here and lose a counter war over it um, because I don't care. I actually, that was kind of exactly what I wanted to happen. So I red blast that guy because now I can slam Jace. So Ancestral goes off. Flip Ascanta, Jace, Dump the Angel. I've got a Red Blast in hand, and I've got a Moat, so I can't... It's going to be really tough to beat me from this position. Sure, there's a Mentor. 
I'm going to go ahead and jace some cards into hand, play a Mox, Flooded Strand, throw down Moat. Feel pretty good here. It's got an accumulated knowledge, and here I probably needed to red blast this one. So they're digging. And found what they were looking for, a disenchant. It's a little frustrating. All right, so I was thinking of using his concept, but I'm going to let it go. More frustrating, though, is the time factor. I just don't have it. And with that, I'm going to lose, but it's not too big of a deal. Um, because, like I said, I I kind of threw away games two and three after um, taking forever in a day in games in game one. But it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, you didn't get to see the half of it, honestly. Anyway, so moving on to the next opponent. And uh, as far as my opponent goes, it, they were pretty gracious about it. Anyway, opponent's got a first turn LED into Street Wraith, um, flipping a Golgari Grave Troll, getting a Narcomoeba into play. It's not a situation you want to be in. So I'm going to rush out some mana and set on a Counterspell and pass. Opponent's got two Cabal Therapies in the graveyard now. I'm going to shuffle away the cards I don't want and find a card I don't want. Pass. Opponent's got a Bloodgast. Uh, dredge is a Dakmore Salvage, and is probably going to dredge away from the loam pretty soon. Meanwhile, I'm going to draw and do nothing, take some more damage. And I find an As Foretold, so As Foretold, boom, Ancestral myself, play Flooded Strand and pass. Opponent loams, let that happen, gets a Blood Gas down, another Blood Gas, smashes in for some damage. And goes for Cabal Therapy with Bridge from Below. So I'm going to force with Dak Faden. They're going to go for another one. I'm going to force with Counterspell. Because they're going to name Force of Will, because they always name Force of Will. And now I have my choice of how do I want to win. I decided I'm going to go for Moat. And then I was trying to decide, do I restore balance here or not? If I do, it'll kill all of my opponent's creatures, and they'll discard down three cards. I don't really care too much for that, because what I expect to happen is my opponent next turn will probably dredge maybe life from the loam, maybe something else. But if they dredge loam and go to a six card in hand, then loam up to um, nine and play a land, go to eight, pass. Then on the next turn, I can restore balance and drop them down to uh, almost no cards in hand because I can uh, I'll have a counter spell that I can play off as foretold. I can play Fire Ice for free off as foretold, or, or uh, just hard cast it, uh, restore balance, and sit on a counter spell. Alternately, there's almost no reason to restore balance if I don't expect my opponent has um, artifact or. In or rather, enchantment removal, I can chill out here and eat some Narcomoeba beats, beat down for a little bit longer, fire it if I get scared, but uh, sit and hope to dig up a Zern Orb, because if I can get Zern Orb and then restore balance, I can mind twist and Armageddon my opponent while gaining a bunch of life and have, as foretold, um, allow me to play my cards, and I don't think my opponent's going to win there. So that was an awesome game one against Dredge. And so in game two, I've got this really fast hand that's going to dig quickly. My opponent has to mulligan a few times. Cabal Therapy is naming Force of Will. Probably should have therapied themselves, to be honest. I'm not going to give him a chance now, though. Goes for a therapy targeting himself, and boom. Counterspell. Wasteland. Sylvan. And my opponent has no land. Misses a land, and I'm going to draw a bunch of cards here. And at that, my opponent just packs it in right away. Pretty awesome stuff. I thought it's not the easiest thing in the world to beat a dredge deck. Uh, and then lastly, I've got this game against D Logon 2. With a really nice hand against... I don't know what my opponent's playing, honestly. I'm not sure if they came into the wrong room or what. I felt pretty bad here. I get first turn land tax pass off of a mox, so... 
very tough for my opponent to do much here. It has no drop, and I don't know what the heck is Adventuring Gear doing in a deck, but it's like a super crappy land tax, I guess. All right, so I'm going to Ancestral up and just chill on a counter spell because I, I don't know what's going on over there, and I don't like not knowing what's going on. So we're going to put together a tax rack here very soon. All right, so I can tax here because I can then suspend Ancestral. Well, I get a Force of Will, so that changes things. I can go scroll rack and just shove a bunch of cards away. And then discard. So I'll throw away um, Guy's Blessing, no problem, because I have a way to shuffle that doesn't require me to spend mana. So the first Blessing you can just chunk if you need to like that. It's not a big deal. Opponent's doing nothing over there. Uh, I, this is not really a, a demonstration of how to beat a, a challenging opponent. This is more of a how does the deck goldfish, right? How well do we goldfish? So I says suspend an Ancestral right there. Opponent's playing. I, I have no idea. Worst... That's a Savannah Lions that's better because it has more creature types, but worse because it's not actually Savannah Lions, and Savannah Lions is a really nice looking card. All right, well, I'm going to tax here. Grab some more cards. I know how this game is played, right? Mox myself away a wasteland. I'm actually just getting more blue into play. I'm done with tax games. I've got an Ancestral Recall coming, so not super concerned with that opponent can't attack gains a special ability can't attack place terramorphic expense i think this person must have just came into the wrong room by mistake and under that assumption i go ahead and tap some mana that i really didn't need to tap there but i'm just i just don't see how this person can can do anything to beat me and there's a counterbalance to go with the scroll rack and that's it they've had enough at this point so, yeah, that was mostly, uh, like I said, a, uh, a demonstration of what the deck can do while goldfishing. We had two more turns on Ancestral Vision. feels like that Vision was suspended for like a million turns, but I guess I waited on it. Um, yeah, and I, I suppose I, right here I probably would have... I guess it would have just passed. I mean, I, I don't even know what do you do right here. I guess I just passed because of the... Uh, I play Flooded Strand most likely, and I suppose what I would do is play Flooded Strand and play Search for his Kanta. I can force a will with the Fire Ice, and I can Counterspell, plus I can activate Counterbalance with uh, Scroll Rack. It would leave me with three mana up, one for Scroll Rack, two for a Counter, plus a Force of Will. Three Counter Spells, it should be enough against the Expedition Envoy beatdown that I was, um, you know, furiously defending myself against. So, anyway, last game wasn't super exciting, but, you know, like I said, I like those demonstration games too. And eh, it's fine. Hopefully my opponent had fun. So yeah, so here's the final score on where we're at with the deck. I'm not I'm not 100% on the mentor thing in the sideboard. It's possible maybe we just want like a uh, a cleanup card uh, as an option out of the board. A Supreme Verdict, for example, might be really nice to deal with those kind of aggressive decks. That might actually make even more sense than the mentor. The trick with the mentor is that it forces, it punishes the opponent who sideboards out their um, removal, and it allows you to sideboard into a way to fight against planeswalkers more easily. So the mentor has like some value as a tech, as a singleton sideboard card. But if you're playing against, say, like blue white Cobblade, Stoneforge, or blue white. Um, or any of the like blue base decks that are aggressive decks and not pure control, then sideboarding in a mentor would be probably wrong. Uh, a supreme verdict, on the other hand, would be would be very helpful. So the question really at that point becomes whether or not um, supreme verdict is a card that would be worth sideboarding in, or uh, or would we want the mentor for those control battles to punish them? So for now, I've got the mentor for the punish. Supreme Verdict, of course, also being nice because you can force with it. But, uh, and honestly, like, Verdict would not be a bad card to have in the deck at all. Um, Forcible Wrath is a really appealing uh, effect to have in this deck, especially since Enchantress can be problematic, as can cards like Monastery Mentor. 
But I guess that's a decision for another day. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. I look forward to any input that you might provide. And uh, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.